Good morning and welcome to the latest edition of the Golfing Society podcast. I have the privilege of pleasure this morning of having my first international guests in conversation. I'd like to welcome this morning Sue Young back and also Yoon Young back to our podcast. Now, Sue, for the listeners, I also understand you're known as Sue. Yes. So we're going to call you Sue for the purpose of this episode. And also, it's Yoon for the purpose yep. of this episode. I have to say, it's an absolute pleasure to have you with us this morning. And just so the audience know, these two inspirational ladies are the founders of an organization called Dementality, who are doing some amazing work to improve the lives of families living with dementia in Switzerland. And quite interestingly, in terms of the international perspective of this conversation, your parents, if, if I'm right, are originally from South Korea? Yes, they are. Yeah, and you were both born in Switzerland. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So I'm not going to spoil the introductions anymore. I'm going to hand over to you ladies to just introduce yourselves and tell the audience a little bit about your backgrounds, why you got involved in de- Dementality, and why you're so passionate about making a difference within the world of dementia in Switzerland, but then hopefully further afield. So without further ado, ladies, over to you. Introduce yourselves. Do you want to start as your elder? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on, Sue, you go first then. <laughs> okay. So personal background, let's say. As you already mentioned, we were born and raised up in Switzerland. So we have dual mentality, I would say, Asian, Korean, as well as Swiss, Swiss German. We still are very educated in the sense that we, in, in a family way, so family comes first, apart from health, and uh, the family spirit is something we have been living on since ever, and this is the reason why we experienced or we came across the, the, the illness, dementia through our mom who was diagnosed in 2018. And having had this illness in the family, we obviously said we will support her from A to Z. Yeah. And I think why we decided to make a difference in the world of families living with dementia is also because of our personal background. I've We've been, as my sister said, we've been born and raised here in Switzerland, but our background is quite international. I moved at the age of 19 to Paris and lived there for 20 years, working in the fashion industry as a fashion designer and an art director, and then came back in 2018, three years after mom got diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And my sister has quite another background, I would say. Yeah, so my background is service-oriented. My background is hotel management. I did here in Switzerland. So also the service aspect, as well as the family aspect, as well as um, helping each other, understanding and having the empathy to support each other is something which is in our DNA, let's say. So that combined together made us decide to move in another direction, uh, let's say work-wise. So we founded The Mentality in 2019. The Mentality is a combination of the words dementia and mentality. And that's our philosophy, how we see living with dementia. It's, it's of course, it's an illness. But what we do or we try to do is to make the best out of it. We had the chance that we, mom got diagnosed when, no, before mom got diagnosed, we, we knew that she had the illness. And for three years, that was first, 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 first signs that she had of dementia. Mm. 2015 and we did everything to activate her through our lives we took her everywhere we could she had dinner with us with friends we went on vacation with her we activated her also during the days cooking with her let's say so that made us decide in 2019 to found association to 
provide the same help for other families, create society with people that are living the same, let's say, tragedy, because it's a tragedy, and try to give them, them hope that even with dementia, it's still possible to have a life with a lot of happiness. Something to add on. Our mom is still alive. She is still living at home. It's almost 10 years. To point out, dementia and the mo most uh, common form is Alzheimer's is not the illness itself, but uh, what we have experienced through all those years before the diagnosis and uh, the helpless situations we had. The confrontations we had, the tears we came across, devastating moments, but also moments in the middle of crying, we were laughing again in, in, in a tragedy, but has seen also the beauty, learning to, to step back, learning to be in the moment, because Alzheimer's is about being in the moment, which many or the majority of the human beings are losing day by day. Is, is also the beautiful side of illness, dementia. And, but also seeing that as a person affected with the illness, at the same time, seeing caregivers having, having confrontations, challenges, struggles day by day, the magic which we are creating now, which came out of this experience is the mentality. That's a, a fantastic introduction. And I love the two, the two words I want to pick out from that introduction, hope and magic. And I mean, you've had 10 years doing some amazing work looking after, looking after your mum. I say amazing work, but ultimately, you know, she's your mum and you want to do the best by your mum and you want to make sure that she has uh, the best quality of life. And I think in terms of your why, why you do what you do, uh, my why, it's all based on either lived experience, personal experience, and knowing that in every single human being, no matter what challenge comes their way, there is a life still to be led. And it's about picking out those favorite things. I mean, you mentioned your mum and cooking. I bet she's an amazing cook. But, you know, that's obviously something that uh, sparks her and she enjoys. And I think it's about, you, you mentioned in the moment, keeping your mum and keeping people like your mum in the moment of their happy place for as long as possible. And I think today, in, in terms of the first few moments we've spent together, I think we're understanding that there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of things that global similarities, global challenges. Yes. But I just think that if you get the right ethos and you get the right people with that ethos together, then I'm going to go to one of my favorite sayings of all time. Amazing things can happen. And, you know, we, we've met through golf. We've met through an introduction. And as a result of that introduction, we're here starting a, a great journey in collaboration to try and make a difference to more people's lives through some of the, the great services that, that we offer, that you offer. But combining the two means that people like your mum can have that happy, healthy life for longer. So a great, a great introduction, and I hope the audience are getting a, an understanding of the global context. So just in terms of the situation with dementia in Switzerland, what, what, how, how are things at the minute? Is it, is it a big problem? Is it a costly problem? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's all combined, actually. It's, it's an illness that since we started the mentality, we hear more and more about people we know people we meet, they all struggling with the illness. Just to give you an example, I just talked to a friend this morning. His neighbor, his wife got diagnosed with Alzheimer's at the age of 54. And they're struggling now with the whole, how they're going to live with this illness. And they are... They're searching for help because they have two children at the age of 14 and 18. So it's, yes, there's a lot of struggle because it's not only, I'm talking especially about Alzheimer's. It's not an illness for elder people anymore. 
it's for everybody. So, and unfortunately, there is still not that much help in terms of financial help or also human help for people with dementia because it's still a taboo. People do not want to talk about it. People don't want to get diagnosed. They wait until the very end or very late. And this is what we try also to change because as soon as you know, or as the family knows, because it's not always good that the person who's affected that he, that he or her knows, but that the family now knows. So we can still do start with therapy that can slow down the, the illness itself. Yes, the number to give, to give a little number is we are now facing in Switzerland 153,000 people living with any form of dementia here in Switzerland. We are about 8 million inhabitants in Switzerland. They say, or it is forecasted that the number of people affected by any form of dementia is going to double, and in Europe they say tripling. So, the, but the issue is not the number as such, is the person who is affected or has been diagnosed with dementia is one thing, but there's the whole family who are also uh, suffering together with the person who has been diagnosed with dementia. So, of course, there is a cost factor, which is not supported here in Switzerland or a very tiny bit supported, let's say. And at the same time, there is also a risk for the caregivers due to the increased caring day by day that they are seeking themselves. And you, t- you two amazing ladies, obviously still caring for your mum. Is, is your dad still around as well? Yes. 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 Yeah, and it, how how's your dad's health? It depends on the days. Let's say he is basically he's basically today's his birthday. Actually, <laughs> oh, happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> he's thirty. He's turning eighty three. He is for his age. He has a good health. Let's say he had other conditions, and one of the conditions was in two thousand and fourteen when where he had a car accident. And we had a brain trauma, I think. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we think that's the shock was one of the reasons why mom got one year late to diagnose or had the first symptoms of Alzheimer's. Mm. But he is doing good, but he is also exhausted because he's the person who is living 24 with mom. Uh, we try to help him as much as we can. And my sister tries to take him as much as possible on the court courts. And that does a, a quite good benefit to him. We'll talk about it later. Yes, we talk about it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is one of the things we also had to learn. We had to learn mom is there we have to take care of her. We want to take care of her, but also we have to learn to take care of ourselves as well. Because if we burn out, there is no help for anybody else. So this is one of the topics that are very important also for us. Yes. So, but the risk, the risk of burning out because we have day by day or minute by minute an SOS situation. Because the person who is affected with, with dementia is, is, is helpless, let's say, is, is losing memory, doesn't know how to do things on a daily, on a da- daily task, let's say. So you are constantly running behind and trying to help. And in, in this instance, because you are in the middle of the scene, you are obviously putting yourself behind. And this is at the end of the day, what what you have been doing is 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 supporting and supporting and supporting twenty four seven that the chances or the risk at the same time that your health is going to be affected in in one one way or the other is is increasing. What is very important is also to to mention our living status due to the fact that mom has this diagnosis and because 
that dementia has no turning better. Like the health condition is not usually turning better, but it's always uh, going down. We we have we have changed our lives in the sense that we our family house, which my par- our parents are living in, and we are living in too. And at the same time, we are living with our partners outside. So it's a it's a back and forth, back and forth thing. And this is also supporting, obviously, mom and uh, taking care of mom as well as taking care of dad. And yourselves. And, and our- ourselves, yes. And your families. Yes, yes. But I think it's an absolute perfect example of what a small world the dementia world is. Because all the th- all the things that you have just mentioned to me, the good things, the challenges, and everything else, those are things I hear in every conversation I have with a family living with dementia. And for our, from our perspective, I think it's it's good to let the audience know and keep it in context that the actual ways that we need to address these challenges are pretty simple and can be adopted globally because it's about keeping people happy healthy enjoying life for as long as possible no matter what challenge comes their way and what you're you've just demonstrated there from switzerland with two parents who uh, originate from south korea is that these challenges that you're facing in your family are challenges that people are facing in every single country where dementia is manifesting itself, you know, with, within uh, within health and, and within well-being within those countries. And it's something that all countries need to be addressing. And I think it's great today to have this first international conversation about dementia, from, from our perspective anyway, just to help our audience understand that it is a small world. Because it is a small world, it makes it easier to come up with solutions that can be adopted for every country. Yes, there might be cultural differences. Yes, there might be language barriers. But ultimately, it's all about the same things. It's about keeping people happy, healthy, enjoying life for as long as possible. And when I looked at the National Dementia Strategy for Switzerland, because I've done a little bit of homework, three things really that stood out for me in terms of the, the national strategy, and that was it's all about improving the quality of life. It's all about reducing the associated burdens. We've talked about the unpaid carers and the families that are in this together. And then it's making sure that there's a quality of care provided. So really, I like those three underpinning elements of that strategy, really. And I think that that is something that has got, if it's not already been adopted at scale globally, those, if you like, key elements of a strategy, it should be, because I think that really sums it up in quality of life reduce the burden and uh, ensure the quality of care. And then really, if we put that at the heart of everything we do, then we've got a chance of making a real big difference. So I think it's been a fascinating start to the conversation. I've really enjoyed it. And thanks for sharing your, you know, your personal stories and your why, because all of us wanting to make a difference in this dementia space, in this healthy aging space, we get into it for a reason. And I think it's important that the audiences understand the the shared passion, drive and determination and where that comes from, from all the people that, that, you know, we speak to. So thanks for sharing that. Welcome back, listeners. And it's been a great start to our first international conversation with both Sue and Yoon this afternoon, who are doing some amazing work with an organization called Dementality. So we've shared their why, their background as to why they want to make a difference within this this space. And I think now really what I'd like you to do is, Sue and, and you, and in your own words, just, just give the audience a flavor of what Dementality is all about and what you do and what, you, what your sort of uh, ambitions are for the future. Well, it actually started, uh, as, a, as we said, in 2019. We tried to occupy mom as much as possible with things she likes to do. And it was actually right before COVID, <laughs> which for us was actually as timing because we spent a lot of time with mom at home. So we started to cook during COVID. Everything was homemade. So we could integrate mom into the whole process of cooking as she's ha- she has learned it 
to us in the past. So every menu was uh, prepared with her. So we found enjoyment there. We had a uh, good moments during preparation, especially also during dinner or lunch. Everything was, as I said, homemade. So we kind of understood that there was a form of therapy that we could bring in the market for people living with dementia in early stages. So right after that, we started doing preparation of products that we are selling now, such as tomato sauce, such as fruit spread. <laughs> we are preparing food that is not processed and also has a good quality of raw materials because nutrition is also a great topic to absolutely healthy life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what we tried to do is to give holistic therapy for people with dementia. So we integrate them into our, let's say, business where they prepare with us the food. They help us pack. They help us unpack for the packaging. And this creates for them a feeling of being needed. And also, and, and, and also an enjoyment during that therapy. So that is how we started actually the form of th therapy called Memory Lab. Memory Lab is based on the inspiration of Maria Montessori, the Montessori pe pedagogy, or how do you say it in English? <laughs> Anyways, it says, uh, help me to do it by myself. So through observations, through analysis, through discussions, through body language, you see what the person on that specific day is capable of doing and not doing. And what we do is we strengthen the, the positive emotions of, yes, I can by letting them doing that part of work in the whole process of our products called Love Over Brain. Oh, that's, uh, that's absolutely amazing. So that's helping them to do by themselves, helping them to do by themselves. I love that. I absolutely love that. That is such a great ethos. Yes, yes. And this actually goes on to golf as well. We're not quite ready to go down the golfing route yet. Not yet. Not yet. So this is the, the audience will not believe that we've gone this far into a podcast and not really talked about golf yet. But anyway, <laughs> we're, try, we're trying to set the wider context at this stage of the conversation. <laughs> but I'm biting my lip at the minute. We will come on to golf <laughs> very, very shortly. But okay. I think that's an interesting philosophy that probably can be introduced across all things, depending on what that person's favorite thing is really and obviously for for, for your mum cooking has also, been very important yes but it's also is is also because dementia is uh, you 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 get to learn the person's physical status or mindset or memory uh, at that instant point in time and from that point in time you 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 start trying to this trying out this and that activity and then you figure out very quickly which activity she or he feels good at and keeps on yeah. Yeah. and it's something you want to strengthen because it's it's, it's a positive positive experience you are doing and you, totally. you figure out that oh i can do it i can still do it and i i i have the memory for it and i can remember and and what is also very interesting is that when we have two, three people, then one person is like, they, they try to do all the same thing. And then one person forgets, right? And then the other person who is affected with dementia is helping the other person. So it's, it's, it's a community as well. So yeah, it, it, it helps each other. It helps each other. It helps also the process of remembering because you, you, you do all the time the same things, small things, easy things not not challenging people and 
having a lot of enjoyment. That's the one thing that I was waiting for you to say: enjoyment and fun, because that was the that was the one thing I hoped you would finish your little uh, introduction about what then mentality is all about with, <laughs> because you know for me there was a couple of things that came out of that really there was the sense of purpose, you know everyone needs a reason to get out of bed on a morning and have something to look forward to, and that doesn't change when a dementia diagnosis comes your way, and doing something together, feeling that sense of belonging knowing that you're not alone, you're in this together and you've got great people around you. And then finally, have fun and enjoyment doing it. Yes. We also want to point out an experience we had a day or two where we where we had games, games at one desk and the uh, the um, the memory lab in the sense of uh, preparing food, right? To test which one they are going to. And they are using the the preparation of the food. They pre- prefer to do that instead of games, which are somehow pointless. They don't see the the, the use of being used or like the, the 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 success feeling, or they just play around, right? So so they they prefer to do the other thing, which is being integrated in a process of healthy food. Well, I think it's always a matter of making it meaningful. Yes. Of course, yeah. You know, yes. for some people, I mean, to be honest, I've always said to all of the people around me and anyone I, I talk to who is, is is wanting to listen to what, I, what Anthony Blackburn would need if Anthony was diagnosed tomorrow. He'd need sport in his life all the time. If you put me into a room where I was asked to do flower arranging, colouring <laughs> competitions and all that sort of stuff, to be honest, yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't that wouldn't float my boat, as they say in, in England. And those aren't the things that spark me into life. But if you gave me a day full of sport, socialising, and having a great time and a bit of fun, then that would be a happy, healthy life for me post diagnosis. So you're right; it's about finding those sparks and making it meaningful. Give the people the chance to do something that they either have enjoyed or because of a certain element of their background, whether that be sport, whatever it might be, might want to learn for the first time. And I think a lot of people in this space don't understand that you can start learning some fantastic new skills like playing golf, like cooking, you know, like preparing fruit spread, get the the terminology right, (laughs) later in life, even with a, a cognitive impairment. And I think that's really, really important. It's never too late to learn a new skill and that's what hopefully keeps that life sparked to keep going for longer yes yes and we, we we absolutely agree with you we experience that people with dementia are able to learn as we are like every human being is without being diagnosed or having dementia as an illness so you are you are able if you are willing to to learn new things and new, new, new tasks and new, 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 new activities. And doing it together, you know, you're learning together and you're creating yes. new friendships through learning yes. a new thing together. Yes. Yes. And as I say, you've got a new highlight in your week. You've got something to look forward to and a reason to get out of bed on a morning. So I think what you've done with your, your initial programs there, it, it's inspiring, but the DNA and the ethos behind what you're doing is a great blueprint, which I think can be, you know, apply to other other things that possibly people living with with a dementia would would benefit from. But keep, keeping the service design and DNA, yeah, you know, keeping that absolutely at the heart of everything else that you do in the future, I think is really really important. And just finally, just as an entrepreneur, I've obviously got to give you one little idea. I can't wait to get the cookbook from the group. <laughs> yeah, can't wait to sample the recipes because I'm I'm sat here and it, I know it's only morning time in in the UK at the moment, but uh, your mum's cooking sounds brilliant. The fruit spread sounds great, and, and I'm sure there's some great recipes that could go into uh, your first cookbook. Yes, yes, is something we have at the back Plan. of our head. Plan. I knew. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I'm moving moving on to. Letting the audience really know how we came to meet each other, really. So, did you just want to just just mention yes. to the audience, really, how how we first met? 
Yes, I uh, I'd like to explain something. It's actually gold. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the beauty of golf, if I may say so, is the chance to meet new people. Cross border, regardless the language you speak. Because for us, golf is a language on its own. And actually, during a research for a presentation, we did about golf for, 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 for golf and dementia at a Swiss private golf tournament. I, I we, cre- we came across Andrew Murray, who then quickly introduced us to you, Anthony, and golf in society. But at the same time, that the very interesting thing out of that is like it clicked. It clicked in the, in the sense of like similar, similar mentalities, similar a vision, a similar power, what we want to achieve, made us to have this first podcast today and hopefully to have a long journey to go. Fantastic. So my favorite saying again, a simple hello can lead to a million things. I mean, as you know, Dr. Andrew Murray has been a great ambassador for the work that that, that we do. And he obviously has a, a role where he does get to, the chance to travel the world and 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 meet different audiences through golf in, in in different countries. But Andrew is a great person at bringing people together, and yeah, we wouldn't be here today without his wonderful introduction. So, on, to the listeners out there, a great thank you to Dr. Andrew Murray for the introduction. So, what when you when you said that it clicked? Obviously, we call that a light bulb moment. So you've obviously seen that what you're doing in terms of therapies and what golf in society is doing, that you think there's an opportunity to sort of use golf as a therapy. So in 2020, where we were still doing our memory lab, we had the situation that dad was struggling with the situation of uh, as a caregiver. And we had one of our guests who used to play a lot of golf so and his daughter is she's a golf pro i think i would say she used to she, be, yeah. yeah she used to be a golf pro so my sister decided to take those two gentlemen to a golf court so we did basically to to, to get back to golf uh, you are confronted with a, a bit of nervosity and anxiety so instead of going for a golf tour, we decided just to, to grab the golf bags and go on the driving range and to do some putting as well. And um, the experience we had at the moment uh, was happy faces, sat- satisfaction, laugh, good moments, things you'd like to do on, on a daily basis, let's say. That was our, actually our first experience with golf since we started the mentality. And I'm so pleased you started and, on the uh, putting green. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the, to, 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 to explain a little further, because, uh, because dementia is, is, is challenging the whole family, we observed actually how dad is doing on a daily basis. So it, it, it was the longer the more the, the caring is becoming intensive. And it, it, at one point in time, you, you have the feeling you are in a vicious circle with no way out. And so we, although uh, our dad was trying to keep up to it and also trying to, to somehow live his life, we saw that he is weakening substantially and struggling and that his joy of life is, is bit by bit disappearing. So this is... But the first move we did in 2020 on, on the putting and on the, on the driving range was actually our kickoff to, to, to golf somehow. And, and, uh, and, uh, as, as we went along, along, uh, we obviously we, we concentrated on our, our main activation, which is the memory lab and doing, producing our products. But at the back of our heads, we thought like we want to create something with golf for the caregivers so that was the approach we had in mind and then we came across you (laughs) so now the whole idea is is is, uh, becoming bigger 
<laughs> yeah, I think that I think that's fascinating. It's something that's very close to our heart as well, and something we're just about to start here in the UK. Because I think we've found that a lot of carers actually have expressed an interest in possibly giving golf a go, but we've never never run programs yet for getting to, getting to golf or discover golf as a caregiver. So we'll come on to a little bit more about next steps in terms of how we're going to build our collaboration and some of the exciting things we're going to we're going to do together. But that whole thing around giving carers the opportunity, I think is really, really important. And, and the reason it sort of, it it resonated with me once I had a few people expressing an interest in, in giving golf a go themselves was, let's face it, this, this disease is going to eventually kill their loved one, but probably the carer will survive their loved one. And if you've built up a great uh, framework of friendships, camaraderie enjoyable enjoyable time at a golf venue then for me the next step is that once those moments come when people want to get their lives back on track after they've got over the the challenges of dealing with the bereavement and their loss then those opportunities to keep your your uh, your regular enjoyable thing in your week as golf i think has got huge potential to play because it it's a great way for those friendships to endure for those opportunities to get into these wonderful green spaces and and very supportive environments to to endure and be part of their lives forever and i think that's really really important we must remember that there is a life after the diagnosis and it's probably the carer that will have that life to live and the more opportunities they've got to live that happier, healthier life with some favorite things in it for as long as possible, uh, the, the better for everybody in society, really. Yes, it actually is so. The, the, the beauty of this, this, this whole golf story, I, I, I'd like to say is that our dad was, was, was and still is a golfer. And he, together with our mom, told us at the at the younger age, we were about seventeen, that we should uh, we should start golfing. And then we said, "Oh, but that's something for the elder ones." <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, or like we don't know if that is going to be the activity we should or we want to be doing. So we did our first golf experience at that age, and we hated it. <laughs> <laughs> like hitting the golf ball is not as easy as it looks like and so that was our first experience and the beauty out of it is now although I have not been playing golf on a regular basis I still have a handicap now and the, the, the beauty out of it is that now where our dad at the age and with his accident and with the, all these other healthy issues he has health issues he has now it's it's me supporting him going back to golf and at the same time together enjoying golf and 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 the fact is actually i i we did that step bringing him back to golf for him which is also helping us because the the more satisfied and the more calm he is it also is also good for us but at the same time, now when I look back, is um, what golf did to him is is one result. But what golf did to me, being also a caregiver, is unpayable. Is uh, is uh, is something you priceless. Uh, exactly. Yeah, priceless. And we've got to give Yoon her first golf lesson, haven't we, in the near future? Yes. So to be honest. <laughs> We, uh, as you know, we started to do a, a teaser test phase with me as a caregiver and with Martin, an ex football captain, as, as a person with, with an old early onset dementia. We started two weeks ago with a little golf session, a little bit of potting <laughs> and and the next session is actually going to be tomorrow. 
how how did Mark enjoy that first uh, experience? Martin, actually, it was very funny because after our phone conversation, we had a conversation with him. Actually, that day, I think in the morning, he talked with his wife because he used to have an, a golf set. Well, he had the golf set and they were actually talking about of giving it away. And then my sister called and gave him a reason not to give that away. So his first experience was very good. We had a lovely day. And as he's an ex-former football player, competition-wise, he was, he was, he was actually very good. So the experience was very positive. Oh, that's fantastic uh, to hear. Yes. And, and on top of it, it's, 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 it's even more than that is like, we, we told them, um, get an after feeling out of this, this first experience. And uh, let us know if that is something you'd like to continue. And the response was from his wife and separately from himself. They are looking forward for the next round. Fantastic. So basically, your first, your first go at in- inspiring an, 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 an ex-footballer into getting the golf clubs back out again has been a success. Yes, yes. So you have a hundred percent track record at the moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think that's a, a great way to to finish out uh, this part of our little conversation together, which I'm hoping the audience are enjoying as, as much as I am. And the, the the best thing we've got out of this is the fact that you've taken a lot of the great things that you've done with Dementality so far. We've had a great introduction through Dr. Andrew Murray to how golf can become the next part of your therapeutic way of improving lives through all things that spark a dementia life back 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 into life and i think really it'll it's a great lead into the the last part of our conversation which is all going to be about how hopefully we're going to collaborate more and some of the exciting things that we've got planned for for the for the year ahead and beyond this is the test we did with uh, with a former football player, and as well as with you as a as a caregiver. We'd like to continue it for, for a couple more weeks, let's say, to see to get the feeling ourselves. What does it to her? What does it to me? What does it to Martin? And at the at the same time, we are in the middle of uh, preparation for how to set up for Switzerland together with your help, Anthony. And we are very much looking forward to our upcoming trip to visit you in person to see to see what uh, you have is established su- successfully so far. Get get the atmosphere out out there. Do do a little bit of golfing in the UK. Uh, understand understanding what what UK is doing with golf in Dementia and how the how all that impacts health because one of the very important things of our own experience we had with Alzheimer's is Alzheimer's has woken us up to concentrate on. Yeah, absolutely. And I always, I always say, Sue and you, that there is no better way to really understand the transformational difference we have on people's lives than seeing us in action. So your forthcoming visit at the end of September yep. to, to Rudding Park in, in Harrogate, where you'll get a chance to see us live, meet our customers, yep. meet, meet our team, meet the venue. And also, as importantly, have a chat with the caregivers, I think will give you a fantastic insight. It's fine to write things down on paper. It's fine to do videos, to do podcasts like this, but ultimately there is no substitute for seeing golf in society live. And I think that once uh, once you come over and are inspired by what we're doing here in, in the UK, you'll quickly see how that can be translated and adapted for for Switzerland. And not just Switzerland for you know other other markets because ultimately you have an affinity with South Asia, Korea. So you, you'll hopefully see the 
international impact that golf in society can have within the world of within the world of golf within the world of dementia but most importantly giving people our aging population in particular the the opportunity to keep enjoying life to the full for as long as possible because at the end of the day it's not about how many years we we uh, exist it's how many years we live and we can only live if we've got the favorite things at the heart of our life for as long as possible and there are a number of different things for some people it's sport for some people it's family for some people it's cooking for some people it's artistic things but their favorite things have got to be kept in their lives for as long as possible and we're hopefully showing through golf how it can play a transformational role within our aging population, within healthy aging, within promoting all the things that are important to us as human beings. And I'm hoping that your visit to Reading Park at the end of the month will actually inspire you to think, you know what, this is something that has got so much potential for families living with dementia in Switzerland. So if I set myself a little bar, it's for you to go back with that inspiration to Switzerland and then start preparing in partnership with us for a great first international launch sometime in the spring next year. How does that sound? Excellent. It, it keeps bumping my heart. <laughs> and just, um, we haven't talked that much about golf, but I, I wanted to really explore today the the, the background of Dementality, your own background, how we first met, which is, I think, something we've really got across to the audience, that power of collaboration, what can happen when great like-minded people come together and collaborate around a, a common purpose, which I think the audience hopefully have got a, a real flavor for that. And just in terms of golf, is, is it, is it an, an accessible sport for the wider population to enjoy? It's, it's becoming more and more accessible. And Swiss golf is doing much to, to get like uh, more people involved in golfing, in golfing. And what is very, from a personal observation, what is very interesting to see, like children start golfing. I, and yesterday I went, uh, I went quickly in the morning. I went for a driving range session and for myself. And, uh, and I, I came across a family, parents and a child. A child is six years old. And then I was curious to know at what age he started golfing. And then they said he started golfing the, the year before. So at the age of five. And the, the most interesting thing is that it was him saying, mom, dad, I want to golf. And, 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 and having the chance to start at that age and how this can develop in, in terms of golf itself, but in terms of how it's going to impact his health is beautiful to see. And that's a fantastic little way to end our, our first podcast together. And just so the audience know, we'll be doing a, a couple of other podcasts where we'll explore in a bit more detail our plans for introducing golf therapy into Switzerland in, in 2025 and beyond. But today, ladies, I'd just like to say thank you so much for your time. It's been an inspirational chat. I've really, really enjoyed it. And to get our first international guests on the Golfing Society podcast is a, is a great honor. I started with the inspiration of my dad, who was a keen sportsman about eight years ago, to try and make a, a difference to people living with challenges to keep enjoying their favorite things. And for my dad, it was golf. And today to be sat here eight years on to be having a first international conversation with two amazing ladies like yourselves is almost a dream come true for me. So I hope the audience have enjoyed this particular episode and I can't wait to record the next ones where we talk about our exciting plans for the future of golf in society, golf therapy, dementality in Switzerland. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank, Thank you very much. much for having us. It was a real pleasure for us as well. It was and brilliant. Brilliant. And we are looking very forward to meeting you soon. Very soon. Yeah, and I can't wait to give you your first golfing lesson, Yoon. Thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>